So it is kind of possible that Leonardo da Vinci, you know, could have purposely blurred the lines with the Apostle John and a woman. We don't really know that for sure, but it could be that that was a possibility. You know, the Last Supper has become one of the most famous and widely studied works of art in the world. And so there is a lot of debate that's been going on regarding its message and the identity of its figures. Although Mary Magdalene is not among them, Jesus' apostles are all present there. Yes, it is true that there are no women in the paintings at all. It is just Jesus and the 12 apostles. Hi, this is Anita from 5 Minutes with Art. Today, I want to kind of answer the question, is Mary Magdalene in the Last Supper painting? You know, a lot of people look at Leonardo da Vinci's classic Last Supper painting. They think that he painted Mary Magdalene in there. Well, the truth is that he did not. Mary Magdalene is not in the Last Supper painting. And the person that most people think is Mary Magdalene is actually John the Beloved. The reason is that Leonardo da Vinci painted that painting at the Last Supper during the precise time when Christ said to his 12 apostles, one of you will betray me. So if you look at the painting, you'll see, you know, you'll see Judas is clutching his his purse with the coins. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll see Doubting Thomas kind of looking up. You'll see John the Beloved, which most people think is Mary Magdalene, kind of leaning back, you know, kind of like, oh, fainting. You know, there were women present at the Last Supper, but none of them are painted in Leonardo da Vinci's paintings, as the painting is only of Christ and his 12 apostles. This is where it's kind of an interesting bit of history, because sometimes in the Renaissance era, the lines were often blurred between male and female garments. So it is kind of possible that Leonardo da Vinci, you know, could have purposely blurred the lines with the Apostle John and a woman. We don't really know that for sure, but it could be that that was a possibility. You know, the Last Supper has become one of the most famous and widely studied works of art in the world. And so there is a lot of debate that's been going on regarding its message and the identity of its figures. Although Mary Magdalene is not among them, Jesus' apostles are all present there. Yes, it is true that there are no women in the paintings at all. It is just Jesus and the 12 apostles. There is a legend, though, about Jesus and Judas's face. Now, I'm sure that this is just a legend because I've heard two stories on this about Judas's face. Many people look at it again and they say, oh, you know, Judas's face and Christ's face looks very similar. And there are some similarities to it. So one of the legends, or you might call one of the myths that's been spreading around, is that when Leonardo da Vinci spent a lot of time, we know that he was a notoriously slow painter. We know that he was somebody who who spent a lot of time and he, he really, you know, he really thought about the 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 12 apostles. This is one of the reasons that makes his painting such a great painting, is he really thought about the reaction that these 12 apostles would have made during this time. I wrote a blog before about did Leonardo da Vinci believe in God? And my own feeling is that yes, in order to have painted the Last Supper the way that he did, he would have had to have knowledge of the scriptures and he would have had to have some belief in God and in Jesus Christ because he really understood what the reaction of each of the apostles would be. That's why, you know, hundreds of years later, this is a painting that people still look at. And when they think about the Last Supper, they still think about this painting. But if you look at the picture of Judas and you look at the picture of Christ, a lot of people see some similarities. So there is a myth or a legend that goes and talks about how he saw this one man and he picked this man and said, you have the perfect face for for Christ. And this man, you know, uh, modeled for him and he painted him as Christ. Then years later, the last painting that he had to paint was Judas and he couldn't find the right model for Judas. So he went to the prison and... He looked around and he saw this man who had done some terrible crimes, and he said, you are my face for Judas. He was about ready to be executed for his crimes, and he was able to get a stay on his execution so he could model for him. And then um, 
Christ. Legend has it that after Leonardo da Vinci painted this man's face, this man turned to him and said, you don't remember me, do you? And he said, no. He said, well, not long ago, I modeled for you as Christ, but look how far I have fallen. So that's kind of a bit of folklore or, you know, urban myth. I think it's probably a bit of folklore or urban myth. I think the more real one is that the, the rector of the monastery where he was painting was so upset with Leonardo da Vinci that, you know, he he was so slow because, you know, he'd show up for a day, then he wouldn't show up for five or six days later. And you can imagine this is like, you know, in their cafeteria, there's paint everywhere. They're not even moving. This was going on for years. It took him like three years to do this painting. So this was not like, you know, a month project. It was a long time. Things were messy. And he was you know, Leonardo da Vinci was notoriously slow, wasn't showing up. And he said to him, he said to Leonardo, and he was pushing him and he said, look, you know, you need to, you know, you need to move faster. You need to get this done. And Leonardo essentially said, if you keep pushing me, then I'm going to paint you in as Judas. So I think that's probably more of the real story about the story of Judas. He did not actually paint him in, but it kind of shows a bit of his sense of humor. If you'd like to read more about this, you can read our our blog on Is Mary Magdalene the Last Supper Painting and some of our other blogs about the Last Supper Paintings. We'll put the links below. Thank you so much for listening and being part of our community. We'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to hear if you have any thoughts or any questions. And, and we'd like to thank all those who helped to make this podcast possible. Mm-hmm.